On the screen right now, you can see three upcoming videos. So if you are subscribed for a particular type of content, stay tuned. Welcome back. We'll be taking a look at ice cream screen recorder. We have five more to go, so let's do this. In this episode, I'll be taking a look at Ice Cream Screen Recorder. It's a free program by Ice Cream Apps. So let's have a look at what they have. They, they have free and tasty software. If we scroll down, we actually see they have a couple of them. We are looking for screen recorder, so let's click on it. By the way, on the screen right now, you can see all must have features for free programs. I think the photo is self-explanatory, but long story short, this is my standard for free programs that record your screen, some features that I think they must have in order to be taken seriously. Let's check out the website and see what they claim and then what we are going to get. So the website looks pretty clean. First and foremost, I can see that they use orange, white and green theme. Green is more used to signify something important, I guess. Let's see what else is going on. First thing we notice is screen recorder and also with big letters it says free. We can see the screenshot of how it's going to look like and it also seems to work on a mobile phone. Let's read and see what they have. It's an easy to use free screen recording software that enables you to record any area of your screen or save it as a screenshot. Record apps and games, video tutorials, webinars, live streams. All of that comes into recording desktop, same stuff. Skype calls and much more. You can record screen along with audio and webcam. So already they are living up to the standard. Here we can see a couple of buttons. If I click any of these, they actually just scroll down and take me to a certain... Actually, they don't even, they don't even scroll down. They, they just jump uh, to a certain section of the website. Let's scroll down ourselves and have a look at what's going on. Again, do pay attention that every important button, I guess, is green color. Maybe, I mean, it's different color and that's what really catches my attention. So let's keep moving on. This is a presentational video. Upon reviewing the video, I can see that this video is outdated by about five to six years. First, pay attention to how the program looks like in the video. There are two buttons. Also, you have this little button over here. It says icecream.me and that's not their URL anymore. Also, you can see how the recorder looks like and they are using Windows 7. So I think this video is about five to six years old. Taking a look at Windows 10 release date, we can see it was released in 2015. Today being the 2020, that about makes it, yeah, about six years old probably. The reason I also say that is because at the end of the video, they tell you what this is compatible with and you'll see it says Windows XP, Windows 7 and Windows 8. There is no Windows 10. So it's an outdated video. These are just the details that I pay attention to, but it can tell you how much they care for their product, how much they update the website, or are they actually just here to grab some money. We can also scroll all the way down to the bottom of the website and have a look at the date tag and the, where the copyright symbol is. Usually it's dated with a year when it was created and the latest year that is today. This will tell you how much the developers pay attention to the website. I've showed you this in previous videos, but just wanted to refresh your memory. Let's click on features and see what's going on. So we have a bunch of options, bunch of features that we basically just gives us the overview of the features. Record screen, audio, annotate, record webinars, which this would be same. This all falls into category of recording a screen. Anyhow, recording a webcam. Then we have last area. One thing to pay attention to is notice how some of these features have this little symbol at the end, the star symbol. We'll get to that. Record games, add your logo and share. What else makes it the best screen recorder? Trim recordings, recording settings, change speed, convert, display hotkeys used in a video. This is interesting. Let's pay attention to this. Show the hotkeys you are using during screen recording. The reason I'm highlighting some of this is because it's gonna matter later in the video. Schedule screen recordings. We also have mouse effects and copy to clipboard. Now it says use hotkeys to control your free screen recording. We also have another symbol. Moving down, we have screenshots that show us how the program looks like today. And this is definitely updated. This is how it looks like, but I'll showcase this as well. It says, do you still have any questions? And moving down, we have system requirements. So we see Windows 10 is included here. And we have actually Mac as well as Android. We also have the requirements, which in my opinion are pretty fair requirements. And one thing that I am noticing is 
there's a bunch of languages. Right off the top of my head, I cannot remember programs in the past having so many languages. Maybe this is just highlighting them on the website, that's why I'm paying attention to it. And finally, we scroll all the way down and we see this right here, there's a note, star symbol. Features marked are available in Windows version only. So a bunch of these are available for only Windows, that's what this symbol signifies. And that's pretty much it, so let's click free download button and see what's going on. So we see ice cream screen recorder, the system, the version and the size, and the size does check out, and it says license freemium. It's either free or, or it's a premium, what's going on? Well, let's go back and let's click upgrade to pro. And let's actually have the program reveal itself to us and see what's going on. I'm actually going to switch back between this page and this page for purchasing the program so we can see what's going on. Every time you want to figure out the truth for the program before actually installing it, you can try clicking on any button that says purchase or buy now or something like that. And usually it's going to give you this kind of comparison to tell you what you will be getting if you pay for the program and what you get if the program is free. So let's have a look at what we get for free program. We actually get a recording time limit of 5 minutes. Taking a look at the starting page, we don't see any, any single one. Let me just type it in. 5. We have nothing that tells us that there is a limit of 5 minutes on the home screen, nothing. So we would find out about this once we start the recording. Next, we have... Re Remove default watermark. Taking a look at the watermark, the only place where it says that there is a watermark is add your own watermark to screen recording. There's nothing that says you they will add their own watermark, nothing like that. I think you get the point. Let's keep moving on. Change output video format. We can only use WebM, which is not really optimal video format for editing especially. You usually use this for maybe websites to embed a vi certain video easily. Or usually this is the format that streamers use. They use this to add a bunch of graphics to their screen or scenery. Usually you want MP4 for uploading to YouTube, for sharing with your friends or for editing. Change output video codec. We only get VP8, which is actually pretty outdated codec. If I remember correctly, there should be even newer ones. VP8 is open and royal free video compression format. I guess it's from 2010. You can also see we have VP9 codec from 2013. The codecs you usually want are H.264 and maybe MPEG-4. We cannot convert recorded videos. Also, seems like we cannot schedule screen recordings, add our own watermark or turn off countdown before recording. Again, do have this in mind. Every time you are you want to figure out what exactly you will be getting from any program, if there is a paid version, if there is a button to pay, click on it and usually you're going to see something like this. The program will reveal itself to you there. Okay, once the download has finished, we've done all this stuff. Let's go ahead and install the program. So, I run the installation, I'm just going to use English, I accept, next, next, we have create desktop shortcut, quick launch, and we have install codex. So, it's going to install additional codex. Once the installation starts, you will be able to see text, and at the end, there's going to be some, if you're fast enough, you're going to be able to read what codex is it installing. So, let's see, crash, sander, just pay attention to here, recorder, AV codex, something, some open CV codec, or see, right there, you can... Get an idea if you, yeah, installing audio codecs. Let's see if anything pops up. So yeah, anyhow, you can see what's going on there. Upon completion of the installation, I can see a couple of things. First thing, the website opened up and it thanks us for installing and it offers us some more programs also to enter our email for it to sign up for a newsletter. Don't ever do this. That's my recommendation. Of course, you can do whatever you want, but my recommendation, generally avoid providing your email online in such websites if you can. One thing I'm noticing is also two icons appeared. One icon seems to be the recording icon and second seems to be a photograph icon. I guess it's for taking screenshots. Let's click finish and it's going to launch the program for us. Here it is and here it tells us, please check the following recording settings to see if they meet your needs. Record audio, microphone, mouse movements, animate mouse clicks and highlight mouse. I'm going to use all of these and click save settings. There's a nice fade in and we have the program. Let me showcase it, show you the features but first, the recording process. So let's see what's going on. I hover over capture the video. I don't have to even click. I just hover over. Then I can go full screen and then I can choose either of my displays. I can also choose custom area, auto area detection and stuff like that. I'm actually going to choose display one, which is my whole monitor one, the main one you're watching right now. Let's click that. Here's what happens. We can see a bunch of uh, squares around the 
screen which signify the region of the recording we also see the size and we see this little uh, bar that opened up i guess and we have a bunch of buttons there i'm actually just going to click record and it tells me video recording has five minutes limit and will have a watermark in free version of the program so as you can see they don't tell you this on the website up until you install the program this can be useful for developers because they can count how many people installed their program that's the information they usually provide online maybe to advertisers or who knows what if you knew about this limit would you download it anyhow we have upgrade to pro button and those show this message again I'm actually going to leave it and just click X and it gives me countdown 3, 2, 1. Also reminds me of the hotkeys that I should use, but the hotkeys were behind the taskbar, so I wasn't exactly able to see what exactly they do. However, the recording has started and there's a button down here. If I hover over it, it tells me the recording uh, time that's elapsed. If I click on it, this bar shows up again and I have a couple of options to pause and to stop. I can also draw on the screen. I can zoom in, turn off or turn on the webcam. The recording of the audio or actually the audio volume and the microphone volume so I'm just gonna click to show you how that looks like that's a webcam I don't have a webcam so I can zoom in if I zoom in you can see that this little uh, rectangle I guess shows up and if I move my mouse it actually follows my mouse there's also a drawing option if I click on it I can have a bunch of drawing options which I'm gonna showcase later so let's click stop and see what happens we can name our file and it tells us the extension. So I'm going to call it test1. There's also a trim button, but I'll get to it. So anyhow, OK, and this pops up. Very nice animation. Video is saved. You can click right here to open it. It gives you this some basic information, and that's about it. We can click X, and it takes us back to the recorder. Now let me showcase the whole program and go over the features. So like I told you guys, if I hover over any button that has a menu, it's going to just immediately open that menu up I don't have to click it under capture video we have full screen so I can choose either of my two monitors which I have right now and you see how it signifies which monitor is selected by making it brighter and it gives you this logo we have a custom area if I click it I can actually click and drag to select the custom area however this does not snap to a window I can click last area and it's gonna select the last area that I recorded with not the last area that I was just selecting but I didn't record with next option we have is auto area detection if I click on it I can actually just hover over any of the program and then I can click the orange logo and press F1 to select or press F1 to select highlighted area however I have a Winamp here and it's not actually doing a good job however if I just hover over for example any window like a basic window I guess it will do a good job detecting it and if I click, you'll notice that uh, it actually does a really good job of selecting the whole program or window. However, once again, Winamp just won't do it. There's also Tasks button, which I guess you just click plus and I don't know what that does. With t I guess with Tasks, you can have it record a certain area. Yeah, however, it doesn't matter what it does because you cannot use it it needs a pro version we also have capturing around the mouse and we have a bunch of options for resolutions i'm going to use 640 by 360 and just click as soon as you click the recording starts and there is no rectangle that's around the mouse to show you exactly where you are recording however the recording has started to turn off the mouse recording however there is no icon down here you actually have to go in your tray area there's a flashing button there you can right click on it and click stop that's how you stop the around the mouse recording. I don't know why this is different, but wanted to showcase it. Next buttons are for something that my series is not about and I'm not interested. So I won't go over these. However, I will just highlight, maybe click one or two so you can see what's going on. This is how game capture looks like. So that's pretty much it. If you want to find out, you'll either have to download this yourself or take a look at my free game capture software series where I might review this program. Anyhow, moving on. Down here, we actually have a list of all the recordings we have done so far. This is actually our recording history, as they call it. And it's pretty neatly organized. There's a bunch of information to get you started. The name, if you click this, it's gonna open up where your file is saved. You can also just click on the name or display button and the video will play. It's gonna play in your selected video player. We can also edit this, which will actually open up the trim feature so once you finish the recording you also have this same feature so you can actually trim the recording by simply dragging like this for example and then i can change the name and i can i think i can also change the size and the speed and i can click save let me just say edited 
one. I'm going to name it like that and click save. And as you can see, it's processing. And that's pretty much it. We can either continue editing, opening the folder, or we can just close this and go back, which is what I'm going to do. We also can see uh, this button, which opens up more options. So we can copy this to clipboard, convert to GIF. We have a bunch of options. So let me just click there. And as you can see, the conversion starts. And there's our GIF, it's listed. We also have a bunch of uploading features, which I'm pretty sure if I click on this, it's going to ask me to log in to my YouTube channel. Anyhow, let's move on. We can see the size, duration, and the resolution. And we also have a trash button. However, if you click this, it does not remove the file. It only removes it from the history list. It's still on your computer, however. Oh, by the way, let me go back quickly. Clicking the upload to YouTube actually opened up a window in my browser and it's asking me to choose an account to continue to ice cream screen recorder which i'm not gonna do don't ever use these third-party programs to log into your youtube channel or anything for that matter use the official website let's move on we also have clear history which will basically remove all of these from the list will not uh, actually remove them from your computer we also have a button upgrade to pro version and if i click that once again it opens up this same page we have seen before and there's help and settings i'm gonna skip over help i'm just gonna click settings let's see what's going on there Version 6.23 free. We have screenshot language start with Windows preload with Windows. Now I'm not sure what's the difference between these two, but I guess it's there. We have check for updates automatically, send anonymous usage stats. I'm going to turn off both of those actually. Show notifications, area selection zoomer. Let's turn that on so I can show you what this is about. Very in interesting feature. Don't show close button action pop up. We're just going to leave that unticked. We have a webcam. So if you have, so you can actually choose your webcam here. Moving on, we have save to. This is basically how we are where and where we want to save the file. We also have video options to choose a format. However, if you try to choose any other format, this is what pops up. When it comes to video quality, we can only choose high video quality. We cannot use low or medium, a little counterintuitive, but hey, good for us. We can record mouse movements, animate the clicks and highlight the mouse. I'm going to showcase that as well. Now we have a couple of options to actually, I guess, tidy up our recording. Disable screen saver. Very useful if during the recording you maybe leave your computer to sit down and the screen saver turns on for some reason. If you don't want that, very useful. We have seen that there is a show countdown. We cannot turn this off the countdown before the recording, which goes three to one. Next button, we have record hotkeys used. I'm going to tick that. We have seen this on the website previously. Let's see what this is about. And finally, we have high desktop icons. As you can see on my desktop, the icons are already hidden. I'm actually going to tick this and see what happens once the recording stops. Usually what these programs do is once you stop the recording, they actually unhide your desktop icons to keep it simple. Finally, we have watermark options, but you cannot turn this on because you have to pay for it. Next, we have audio options to record audio from the speakers, headphones, basically the computer sounds, and then to record a microphone. We can click open mixer button, which actually opens up both of these, I guess, the mixers from the Windows itself. So it doesn't have its own mixer. However, one thing to note, if I change the record audio, actually the slider that moves is for the recorder itself, not the global slider as you would think it would move, which is good. And also when it comes to microphone, this thing has its own slider. It's not actually changing your levels of your microphone, as you can see. It's It has its own slider, which is good. You want these programs to have their own. Next, we have the devices, my microphone and my headphones that I have plugged in right now. And there's also this pop-up. Let's pay attention to restored audio volume pop-up and see if it's there. Next, we have the hotkeys. Now, if you remember, we have ticked record hotkeys used. Let's see if it's going to actually show these hotkeys on the screen or maybe just in general, if I press any buttons on my keyboard, if it's going to show them on the screen. Finally, in order to save these settings, you have to click save settings button. If you just exit out of this, the settings will not save. So make sure you remember to do that. And also we have activate pro version button, which I guess you can type in the license key and that's it. If I click on capture video, and for example, let's go to full screen display one. This tab opens up, let's see what it has. Notice this little square over here, or this little box here. That's actually area selection zoomer. You'll notice that if I move my mouse, it's actually showing us the zoomed in frame of what's going on. So we can use this to be very precise when we select a certain area, we can be very precise with this. Very useful. We have a recording and stop button, the size of the recording. We also have some couple of options and we can use custom frame size as well. 
we have a timer button, but the only options we have are never, 1 minute, 3 minute, and 5 minutes. We cannot use these other ones because, again, we have a 5 minute recording limit. Interesting how they cared to put so much detail into restricting us, but not updating their video on the website. That tells me that this is about that this program is more about money making rather than actually being a good program. Next we have this button for area which just displays this. We have the draw button which basically lets us draw on the screen. We have a bunch of options like for example this, 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 this. We can type in something. We can also, yeah, just I'm just gonna showcase everything that you can draw for example. Uh, I don't know what this exactly does. I guess move objects so I can select any of these and then move them. And we can also go like this, one, two, three, four, yeah. That's very nice. And we can also clear everything, change the, I guess this is width or thickness, maybe. We can also change the color, undo, redo, remove, and clear all. I've already showed you how zooming in looks like. You just zoom in, and this is how it looks like once you move your mouse. One thing that I'm noticing is, however, it seems like my mouse slows down. Maybe it even has the acceleration turned on, turn, turned on for it. Pay attention to how it moves and let me click this. Look how now it moves so freely. And I've showed you these buttons already. Let's click X. It takes us back here. So that goes for showcasing the program. Quite a little neat organized program, but with a couple of nice details. Has a couple of stuff if you just have a look at it. It's nice. Also, one thing that I'm noticing is as well it's well organized. It's also it's, It seems that it's also about getting to stuff very fast. You want to open up your video? Just click on it. You want to open up its pad, here's a button. Some other programs sometimes don't have these types of buttons. Does this program have luxury features and what are they? One luxury for me is just this organization and how convenient it is to get to any spot very fast. It's convenient and that's very nice. When it comes to recording itself, you can actually draw on the screen and during the recording zoom in and zoom out. Pretty self-explanatory and very nice useful luxury features in my opinion. This area selection zoomer is very neat. It's amazing, I love it. Also, animating mouse clicks and highlighting a mouse is definitely a luxury feature. Now, some of these are also luxury and good for us. Like, for example, you can use the highest quality of the video and you also have a countdown. Those are all, in my opinion, very luxury features for a free program, as well as recording hotkeys used and also hiding desktop icons. Very useful features to tidy up the desktop and show hotkeys used in a video. Overall, once again, pretty nice program. Now, let's test these recordings in a video editing software. We're gonna pay attention to the mouse clicks, to how does it lag, the audio quality, how many audio tracks, what's the color, how does the color look like. So let's take a look at the file in a video editing software. I'm gonna actually import it while that's happening. Let's read what's going on. We have a recorded frame rate of 20.3 FPS. The video is actually 43 seconds and we have, yeah, here's just a little bit more information. So let's see what's going on. First thing I can see is that there are only one video and one audio track. Taking a look at the colors, I don't really see any discoloration. However, I do see like there might be some graining going on. If Just have a look at right here and you'll see how it seems like if I play the video a little faster, you'll see like it's, it's like something's moving here, like little dots are changing. Pay attention to this section. And I don't know if you can see that, but it definitely seems like it's stuff is moving that shouldn't be however it seems very minor there's also a logo in the bottom right corner that says ice cream i'm actually gonna play it and see what happens as you can see i clicked the play button but the video is not playing at all that's because of the format that's being used and it's sim that's simply what happens well we can see the mouse highlight and yeah, everything else was recorded just fine i think and i don't think the video is lagging because if i just move it here i don't think it's lagging Maybe it's not even lagging at all. You'll be the judge in a final section. Let's keep moving on. Let's have a look at the bad things I ran into with this program. First thing I'm obviously going to mention is just the transparency in general. They don't tell you that you have these very serious limitations. And they tell you that the program is free. Well, is it free? You'll be the judge. These buttons up here, as soon as you hover over them, the menus open up. It would be much better if I could just click on it because... I could accidentally open it and every time and it would be annoying very much. 
zooming in feature. You, you will see this in a sample video, but if I zoom in, it's like every time my mouse gets to the border or close to the border, the border moves, but also it's like my mouse slows down a little bit. I think that's created so mouse cannot exit this area. So this area of recording can always follow the mouse. This is by the way called auto panning. In some of the previous programs, if you just move the mouse too fast and you actually exit the recording area, it's going to take some time for this area to catch up to the mouse. Look at this. I just moved out of the way and it's not even re registering the mouse up until the point I get it back look at that if I just move it very fast out of the area it's not even following it anymore until I move the mouse back also zooming in in general is zooming out it's instantaneous there is no any animation slow zooming in effect this can be very awkward for a viewer to focus the attention so if I for example zoom in you have to adjust your eyes to a new screen all of a sudden it can take a time to find what you're looking for these buttons that tell you what is ex the shortcuts, they are actually hidden behind the taskbar. Why would you have this? I cannot see what exactly is F7 or F8 for. Auto area detection seems to have some issues with older programs. For example, you've seen me use Winamp, and I love that program, but it doesn't detect it. So maybe it has some issues with detection of some programs, maybe because they are old, maybe because who knows why. Recording around the mouse is instantaneous. If I click any of these buttons right now, recording will start right away. Also, the whole program disappears in a tray area. But however, with a regular recording, you'll notice that the program doesn't actually disappear in the tray area. It actually stays in the taskbar. Pay attention to this button and you can see it's still there. If I click it, here's the this little panel thingy. Next we have the sorting of the videos. In general, the, I'm first going to talk about uh, the codec. WebM, as I've said, is a codec used for maybe embedding a video to a website or maybe if you're a streamer to use it in a program to put on some overlays or animations. It's very awkward for video editing, but also for just playing in general video players. Look at this. Windows Media Player is going to have issues. The screen will look stretched. As you can see, we cannot pay attention. You cannot see the whole screen. You cannot see the clock down here and you cannot see the whole logo. That's how that looks like. It seems that the logo size is fixed. So if you record smaller screen, the logo will be bigger. If you record bigger size, the logo will be smaller. This trash button, you would think that it would actually delete the whole file from your system, but it doesn't do that. It only removes it from history. Inside settings video, the only format you can use is WebM VP8. There are so many better formats that could be provided for free, so I don't know why they are not doing that. When it comes to video quality, this is actually funny, but this goes in our favor as a user. You cannot choose low or medium quality, you can only choose the highest quality, which Seems very interesting choice, but okay. There's a button that says record hotkeys used. Remember that I told you guys to pay special attention to what website says. Remember, it says display hotkeys used in a video. Show the hotkeys you are using during screen recording. We have ticked this option, record hotkeys used. And I'm also going to press some of the buttons in a sample video. But no buttons show on the screen. No matter if I press just a regular A, S, D, F, G buttons or if I actually press a certain hotkey from this list nothing shows up on the screen so what exactly is this supposed to record I have no idea it seems that this feature doesn't simply work if you change the settings you have to click save settings button nowadays usually when you change the settings they get saved automatically and since this button is the same color as activate pro version button you it's easily to ignore it and it's easily to forget to press it so you might change a bunch of settings forget to press it go back and settings were not saved you have to go back and save them again now let's have a look at the good things i ran into overall i think this program is very simple and i like the organization everything is quickly accessible you can get to where you want to go very fast you don't have to right click and do this do that in fact there is no right click at all just click this button go wherever you want very fast the animations of the program are actually very neat. Could be considered like a makeup, to use an analogy, in general, but I like it. There's a little pop-up animation, there's a countdown as well, the animations here, bunch of very useful and in my opinion very luxury features, like highlighting a mouse, animating mouse clicks, recording mouse movements, obviously, turn that on, turn it off, very nice. I like that there are options to choose where to save a video and a screenshot, also the maximum size 
of the file and the minimum disk space. So if your disk space goes under one gigabyte, it's gonna warn you and you cannot record. Make sure you don't run out of the space. Area Selection Zoomer is a pretty neat tool. It allows you to be very precise when selecting a particular area of your screen. Very, very useful. Also, drawing on the screen. It's not just drawing, it's just that you have a bunch of options. A couple of options that I really like, for example, is this numbering. So I can tell you guys, like, first click here, then click here, then click here and here, maybe here, here, here. Very useful. I like that there is a zoom in feature. It's useful if you want to really focus on something. However, it would be great if there was an animation still. One thing that I also like about the program is how fast and easy it is to convert to GIF. I can just click here, convert to GIF, choose a size, and it starts the conversion right away. And it also lists the file in the list right here. Okay, we are slowly moving into a segment of the sample video. I'm going to show you the settings I have used when recording a sample video. So let's go ahead and see. This is how it looks like. This is the video settings I have used and the audio settings and the hotkeys. In the sample video, I'm going to try my best to include all of these. I'm going to press a couple of hotkeys. I'm, I'm also going to press just ASDFG buttons on my keyboard. I'm also going to, I'm going to pay attention to this close button action pop-up. See if there's any pop-ups. I'm going to click left and right so you can see how that looks like and how the highlight around the mouse looks like. Also, I'm going to show you how zooming in works and I guess drawing, but I already sh showed you this, but still. Let's see it in a sample video. Also, a couple of extra information. Sample video was recorded 18 megabytes for 31 second recording at 1080p resolution. One thing to note, that's because it's a WebM format and usually WebM formats mean lower sized video because it's used for embedding videos on websites. So let's go ahead and test the sample recording. I'm actually gonna click a couple of times with the left and with the right. Let's press Control shift d Here's what opens up the drawing panel. If I can actually click, clear that. I can also zoom in, show you how that looks like. Zoom out. And I can also press Control Shift G. Here's what opens up. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's press also ASDFG on the keyboard right now. And that's about it. And here we are, finally, final summary and a review. Boy, oh boy, this program is actually all over the place. Has good sides, has also some very potential tools, but they don't quite work. Bunch of stuff going on, nothing we really haven't seen before. No special features, except that it executes some things better. So, let me go over something, for example. I've talked about these things in previous videos. For example, these programs have a feature, but it doesn't quite work as you would expect it to. So, for example, this button doesn't remove a file. It actually only deletes it. its listing from this list. The file is still on your computer. There is a couple of promotions for you to upgrade. If you press a wrong button, if there is a certain limitation, like, for example, if I want to schedule a task, and I already start scheduling it, I click save. Oh wait, after you've done already everything set up, oh yeah, you, you can't really use it. That's really a bummer to take you through all of that, but and then all of a sudden pull out, tell you, hey look, yeah, you have to pay for this. The website itself has nothing about the limitations at first glance until you click this button and then you find out about some of the limitations. But again, you start to use it and you really start to see the limitations that it has. It's using very awkward format being WebM to record and it's very hard to edit this type of format in a video editing software. You might have to convert it, but then again the format itself is not very high quality. It, again, it has a bunch of features that don't quite work, like auto area detection doesn't exactly detect some stuff. If I go full screen display, then I have to go through this to click the record, but if I go to around the mouse, if I click anything, the recording starts right away. You've seen how I can actually make the mouse escape the area of the recording. So yeah, a bunch of things don't work, some things do work. I, overall, there is not a single feature, actually there, there is, okay, sorry. There is a one feature, area, area selection zoomer. We have not seen this before. And that's quite useful feature for being very precise when you, I have told this many times throughout this video. If you wanna select a certain area and be very precise about it, that's what that little tool does. But you know, area selection zoomer could have been named a little better, but okay. Hey, we'll take it, that's fine. Again, overall, the program is up and down all over the place. But with the limitations that it has, 
it's not quite there yet, in my opinion. What I'm thinking is, this program is about 65 to 70% for money, and about 30%, maybe 35%, it's made to actually be functional and usable. That's like a little scale that you can have. Is the program actually good and usable, made for a consumer, or is it actually made just to promote a paid version? I think it's like 65 to 35, I'll be generous. 65 being promotion for pro version. I mean, once you click this button, they might as well write down here, hey, bunch of features will start to work properly if you just pay. I've, I, I just want to mention this as well, I've, throughout these videos I've gotten so much support, yeah, so much positive feedback and also a bunch of views, so thank you guys so much, I love that you're interested in this, this is something I really like, I found in, in just in world in general, there's not a lot of transparency and not a lot of, you, you, don't, you don't know what's going on until you dig deep into it, but yeah, as they say, devil is in details I guess. And that's what I'm here to reveal, so thank you so much once again for tuning in. Uh, I've noticed a bunch of you guys that watch my videos are not subscribed, so if this is something you're interested to see more from my channel, do subscribe and stay tuned because I'll, re I'll release a bunch more videos about recording programs. So what's my final grade for this program? Like in the previous videos, you guys will have to check out the spreadsheet that I have and, and actually see the grades for all of, all of these programs. The link is in the description and also in the comments below. So take a look at it. Now, I do want to take this opportunity to thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, it's been awesome making this series so far. I have a couple of more videos to make and then move on. I've gotten so much support, positive comments and a bunch of views as well, which is awesome. I'm happy that there are people interested in what I'm passionate about. And believe it or not, this all started because one guy did not do a proper review. So I got pissed and I decided I'm going to do it better. Just what it is. So that's it for this video. Thank you. I'm going to sign out and I'll see you guys in future episodes. We have three more to go, I think. So stick around for the finale. Thank you and I'll see you in future videos. Priest, signing out.